Ever wondered about the difference between stocks and ETFs? Well, you're not alone. Navigating the financial world can be like trying to decipher an alien language, but don't fret, we're here to help. Let's start with the basics. Stocks or individual shares represent ownership in a company offering a slice of the profits and sometimes voting rights. On the other hand, exchange traded funds or ETFs are a type of investment fund that's traded on stock exchanges, much like individual stocks. They offer a way to invest in a diverse range of assets from stocks to commodities. Understanding these investment options is crucial because they each come with their unique set of risks and rewards. So whether you're a seasoned investor or just starting out, it's important to know what you're getting into. Join us as we delve into the world of stocks and ETFs. What exactly are stocks? Well, stocks, also known as shares or equities, represent ownership in a corporation, giving you a claim on part of the company's assets and earnings. Each stock you own is a piece of the corporate pie. Typically, companies issue stocks to raise capital for expansion, pay off debt, or finance other business activities. When you buy stocks, you're betting on the company's future performance. If the company does well, its stock price may rise, and you could sell your shares for a profit. On the downside, if the company underperforms, the stock price may fall, and you could lose your investment. Investing in individual stocks can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, they offer the potential for high returns if you pick the right ones. You can also receive dividends, which are a portion of a company's earnings paid out to shareholders. On the other hand, they come with a higher risk compared to other investment options. If the company you've invested in goes bankrupt, you may lose your entire investment. To buy and sell stocks, you'll typically need a brokerage account. Today, there are numerous online platforms that make this process straightforward and accessible to everyone. Once you've set up your account, you can start trading. You'll choose the stock you want, decide how many shares to buy, and place your order. Investing in stocks can be rewarding, but it's important to understand the risks involved. The value of your investment can fluctuate based on a variety of factors, including the company's financial health, market sentiment, and broader economic conditions. That's why it's essential to do your homework and make informed decisions. In essence, stocks can provide an opportunity to grow your wealth and potentially outperform other investments over the long term. But they also require a willingness to accept a higher level of risk and the possibility of losing money. Now that we've looked at stocks, let's turn our attention to ETFs. So what are exchange traded funds or ETFs? Picture a basket. Now fill that basket with a variety of different fruits. In the world of finance, that basket is an ETF and the fruits are different types of investments like stocks, bonds, or commodities. An ETF tracks a specific index, sector, commodity, or asset. It's like buying into a ready-made portfolio, mirroring the performance of the assets it contains. One of the key benefits of ETFs is their innate diversification. Since each ETF holds a collection of different investments, it helps spread out the risk. Let's go back to our fruit basket. If one type of fruit, let's say the apples, didn't do so well, you still have oranges, pears, and strawberries to balance things out. The same applies to an ETF. If one stock within the fund underperforms, the others can help offset the losses. This diversification provides a level of risk management that's harder to achieve when buying individual stocks, but there's more. ETFs are also known for their liquidity. They're traded on exchanges just like individual stocks, meaning you can buy and sell ETFs throughout the trading day at market prices. This gives investors the flexibility to react quickly to market changes. And how about costs? ETFs typically have lower expense ratios than mutual funds, making them a cost-effective choice for many investors. Plus, because you're buying a single fund rather than multiple individual stocks, transaction costs can be lower. So, how does one go about buying and selling ETFs? The process is similar to trading individual stocks. You'll need a brokerage account, and from there you can purchase ETFs during trading hours. It's as simple as searching for the ETF you want, entering the number of shares you wish to buy or sell, and executing the trade. With a good understanding of both stocks and ETFs, we can now compare them. How do stocks and ETFs stack up against each other? Let's take a closer look at the risk and return profiles of both. Individual stocks can offer potentially high returns if you pick a winner, but they also carry a higher risk. You're putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak, and if that company doesn't perform well, your investment could take a hit. 
ETFs, on the other hand, spread your investment across a wide range of companies, which can reduce risk. The potential returns might not be as high as a winning stock, but the risk of a significant loss is also lower. Now let's consider liquidity and trading. Stocks and ETFs are both traded on exchanges, which means they can be bought and sold throughout the trading day at market prices. However, some stocks may be more liquid than others, especially those of smaller or less well-known companies. ETFs, because they hold a basket of stocks, can offer more consistent liquidity. Next, we have management fees and expenses. When you invest in an ETF, you'll typically pay a management fee known as the expense ratio. This fee is used to cover the costs of managing and operating the ETF. With stocks, there are no management fees, but you do need to consider trading commissions and the potential costs of researching and selecting stocks. Finally, let's discuss tax implications. When you sell a stock for a profit, you'll generally need to pay capital gains tax. With ETFs, because they're structured in a way that allows investors to buy and sell shares without triggering a capital gains tax event, you might be able to manage your tax liability more effectively. However, it's important to understand that taxes can be a complex area, and the specifics can depend on many factors including your personal circumstances and the tax laws in your country. Having compared stocks and ETFs, let's look at how to use them in a portfolio. How can we incorporate both stocks and ETFs in a diversified portfolio, you may ask? Well, the key lies in striking a balance between risk and reward. Consider this, stocks, while potentially offering higher returns, come with a higher degree of risk. ETFs, on the other hand, offer more stability and are less likely to experience drastic fluctuations. So, by mixing both in your portfolio, you can capitalize on the potential high returns of stocks while cushioning potential blows with the stability of ETFs. Let's look at a few model portfolios. For a conservative investor, a portfolio might consist of 70% ETFs and 30% stocks. For a more aggressive investor, the ratio might flip to 70% stocks and 30% ETFs. The key is to tailor your portfolio to your personal risk tolerance and financial goals. Now that we have a blueprint for a diversified portfolio, let's look at some real-world examples. Who has successfully invested in stocks and ETFs? Let's delve into some real-world examples. You've probably heard of Warren Buffett, one of the most successful stock investors of all time. Buffett's strategy is simple yet effective buy and hold high-quality companies for the long term. His company, Berkshire Hathaway, has consistently outperformed the market, turning modest investments into vast fortunes. On the other side of the coin, consider the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. This ETF, tracking the performance of the S&P 500 index, has delivered impressive returns for its investors. It's a perfect example of how ETFs can provide broad market exposure and diversification, reducing risk while still offering attractive returns. But remember, not all investments are successful. There are countless stories of individuals who've lost money in the market due to poor decision-making or lack of diversification. It's these real-world examples that remind us of the importance of informed investing. As we look to the future, what trends should we keep an eye on? What does the future hold for stocks and ETFs? As we gaze into the financial crystal ball, we see emerging trends reshaping both stock and ETF markets. The advent of technology is not just revolutionizing our daily lives, but also the investment landscape. Artificial intelligence, blockchain, and robo-advisors are becoming the new normal. It's an exciting era for future investors filled with opportunities yet to be discovered. With an eye on the future, let's recap what we've learned. What key insights can we take away from this discussion? The world of stocks and ETFs is vast with unique opportunities and risks. Remember, individual stocks offer potential high returns but with more risk. ETFs, on the other hand, provide diversification, reducing risk but also possibly limiting high returns. Your investment strategy should align with your financial goals and risk tolerance. Stay curious, keep learning, and adapt to the ever-changing financial landscape. Thank you for joining us on this educational journey. Remember, knowledge is power in the world of investments.